Is SteamOS still the best operating system for your Steam Deck? Is there a reason to change your OS? One new OS seeks to answer all of these questions, and more. What is Bazite OS, and why are some in the Steam Deck community clamoring over this OS? It's essentially an alternative operating system for the Steam Deck. It comes with a number of different features that are considered aftermarket on the Steam Deck, and a number of tweaks that aren't even possible on Steam OS. More on that later. It also comes with the latest and greatest Linux kernels and Mesa drivers. It'll always maintain the latest drivers and kernels and such. SteamOS 3.5 is supposed to get a driver and kernel update, but when is that going to come? Furthermore, this is a general use OS. Unlike the default SteamOS, this isn't limited to just the Steam Deck. You can install Bazai OS on a variety of different systems, including but not limited to other handheld systems such as the ROG Ally, and even full-on desktops that have NVIDIA GPUs. That's right. There's a version of Bazite OS that has the NVIDIA drivers already pre-installed. While it is easy to dismiss Bazite OS as just Steam OS with extra tweaks, the truth of the matter is it's very different under the hood. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Bazite OS on your Steam Deck. Do keep in mind, as of the making of this video, Bazite OS currently does not work on eMMC drives. More specifically, the default 64GB eMMC drive on some Steam Deck models. If you've already swapped out that 64GB drive for a much bigger SSD, then this doesn't apply to you. That said, they are working on a fix, but I really couldn't give you a timeline. To get started, you'll want to set up a bootable drive. Most flash drives should be fine. Also, to prevent you from making the same mistakes I did, you cannot use Ventoy or any IODD devices. Let's just say there were some issues. So you do need to use a regular flash drive. Nothing too big, really. All you need is a gigabyte. First, you'll want to download the ISO from the GitHub page. Links in the description down below. You'll essentially want to create a bootable flash drive from this ISO. There's a number of different programs out there. When it comes to Windows utilities, I choose Rufus for this. Be sure to select the proper drive. In my case, mine shows up as H, but yours may be different. Now select the ISO file that you downloaded from their GitHub page. You can name the volume label whatever you want. Keep the file system as FAT32. And press Start. Rufus will detect that this is an ISO hybrid image. Just press Write in ISO image mode. Rufus will also mention that this uses a non-standard Grub version. Just press Yes to connect to the internet and attempt to download it and you should be good. And then just let it do its thing. If it all goes well, then it shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. And you'll know when it's done. Now to move on to our Steam Deck. For starters, you'll want to back up everything. Make sure all of your Steam save data is synced up to the cloud. Make sure you transfer all of your screenshots and ROMs. And basically anything of value off of your Steam Deck because we're going to format the entire system. We're basically going to start from scratch. Now for the fun part. Installing Bazite OS. So plug your install media into your Steam Deck. But before we continue, there is a quick little PSA. If you followed my guide for Deck MTP, you enabled USB dual role device, and you'll need to disable that option. But if you didn't install Deck MTP, then this is no concern to you. Plug your installation media into your Steam Deck. You can do so via a dock. To enter the Steam Deck BIOS, you'll first want to turn off your Steam Deck entirely. Hold volume up as you power on the Steam Deck. And if you did it correctly, you should be greeted with the BIOS screen. It may take some time. But once you see the BIOS screen, you'll want to go to Boot Manager. Once you're inside the Boot Manager, you'll see a couple of different options. Select the one that corresponds to your flash drive. In my case, mine is a Samsung flash drive. Now you'll see this peculiar looking menu. What is this menu? Essentially, this lets you select whatever Bazite version you want. Be sure to select Bazite Deck, because that's for your Steam Deck. This right here is a standard Fedora installer. It's actually very easy to use, but there are some mistakes that can be made if you're not careful. Everything marked in yellow has to be completed. For keyboard layout, select whatever keyboard layout you need. In my case, I'm just going to use English, US. For system, I'm just going to select my 2TB hard drive. Uncheck your SD card and your flash drive that you're installing from. Now you may be wondering, how do you format your internal drive? Well, first you'll want to press done, and then the installer will prompt you. Press reclaim space to reclaim some space, and then press delete all to delete all partitions on your drive and then press reclaim space. Don't worry, your data hasn't been deleted yet. For simplicity's sake, I would leave the root account disabled. 
as for user creation, leave add administrative privileges to this user account checked. You can also uncheck password if you don't need a password. You'll also need to set a time and date. Eastern time is good for me. And finally, the last step is non-negotiable. You have to connect to a Wi-Fi. The installer will fail if you don't connect to a Wi-Fi because it downloads files from the internet. So go ahead and set up your Wi-Fi password and whatnot. You're going to need a keyboard for this, by the way. Press begin installation and you're good to go. Let it do its thing. Installation depends on your internet speed, so be sure to have good connectivity wherever you're at. Once it finishes installing, you'll be greeted with Bazite OS. And it looks really big, especially compared to the Steam Deck. The heck. There's an easy solution to this. What you need to do is you'll need to press this little button down there to open up the desktop. And then right click, go to configure display settings, and then you'll see how messed up it is. Scroll down, and then you'll see the scale is 175%. Change that to 100%, press apply, press keep, and then your resolution's fixed. Now we can proceed with the rest of Bazid OS's installer. You may need to right click and move the window around. Right click, more, and then move, and then be sure to move it in an area where we can see all the buttons. This is the Bazid portal. You'll need to run it at least once to get everything set up. Press the next button and you'll see a couple of options. You can choose to pre-install certain features, like Decky Loader or Emu Deck or Boiler. It also automatically enables GameScope login and hiding the grub menu. It makes it more like SteamOS in particular. Select whatever options you want. You want Emu Deck? Select it. You want Decky Loader? Select it. If you want a SteamOS-like experience, keep hide grub menu and GameScope auto login checked. Press next. It should begin the first phase of setting up Bazite OS. This may take some time. Once this part finishes, you'll want to press next and then go to application installation. This step is entirely optional, but it downloads the flat pack versions of applications you may already be using. You can choose alternative web browsers. You can choose games to install. You can choose launchers like Hero Games Launcher, etc., etc. This part is totally optional, but if you don't want anything, be sure to press next. This step may take a bit depending on what you're installing. I'll check up with you in a bit. Once this is done, press next and then you're done. After this is finished, you'll need to restart your Steam Deck, after which you'll be greeted with an all too familiar OS. Just be sure to set up your user accounts and whatnot, and you've successfully set up Bazite OS. Now to answer some burning questions. How similar is this to Steam OS? The interface is very familiar. You have the Steam interface, and then you have KDE for the desktop. Decky Loader works on Bazite OS. You can even have Bazite OS install Decky Loader for you. CSS Loader themes work just fine. The performance overlay works and even gives you more details. Games run as they should, and honestly, it seems like they run even better. But I think that's more firmly in like the territory of the Fox or Cryobite. Maybe I'll ask them to give it a shot. Okay, so yeah, it's very similar to the Steam Deck experience you get now. But what makes Bazite different? All of the stuff that makes Bazite OS special is admittedly under the hood. It would be admittedly difficult for me to point to one specific flashy feature and be like, that's the killer feature. But I'll try my best. As mentioned earlier in the video, Bazite comes with the latest Linux kernel and the latest Mesa drivers. This is newer than anything that's available in SteamOS right now. Heck, the Linux kernel and Mesa drivers included in Bazai OS are even newer than those that are in SteamOS 3.5. And due to the fact that this is all built on Fedora Silver Blue, Bazai OS should always have the latest and greatest Linux kernels and Mesa drivers. There's also the option to forego KDE altogether in favor of GNOME. Yeah, GNOME, not GNOME. For those not in the know, GNOME is a different desktop environment. This might sound disingenuous, but you know how KDE more resembles Windows? GNOME more resembles Mac OS. That said, sticking with KDE gives you support for Wallpaper Engine, which I believe is possible with SteamOS, but is supported out of the box here. There's also the matter of WayDroid, but WayDroid is not easy and requires a fairly complex guide, probably for a video later at some point. That said, not all Android apps and games work as you'd expect. For example, Blue Archive crashes as soon as you try to log into the game itself. There's also the fact that you can install this on other hardware. SteamOS itself shouldn't be installed on other hardware. This, however, can, and it gives you a really close experience. So my thoughts on the installation process. While I thought the installation process was mostly painless, 
not being able to use Ventoy is a bit of a bummer, but I think that's just how it is. An issue I have with the installer is more or less a flaw with Fedora. You need internet connectivity to finish the install, and the installer doesn't tell you that. I do hope the Bazite team can remedy this situation somehow. Aside from all of that though, I think Bazite has potential. In my opinion, it's a very smooth SteamOS alternative. Most SteamOS tutorials should work on Bazite OS. Bazite OS still supports flat packs and app images and all that cool stuff. But what about day-to-day -day use? Is Bazite OS as stable as SteamOS? So far, I haven't had any issues with it yet. That said, I haven't fully collected my thoughts on Bazite OS. I'm going to use it for a little bit and then give you my thoughts on it. 